All right, well, it's seven o'clock, so I think we can get started. And if Mr. Cable is able to join us, then he'll just pop in when he can. Um, Dr. Gibson, are you able to screen share? Yes, ma'am, whenever you're ready. I think we're ready. If you join us for the pledge. Can you see it? Not yet, there we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, Madam Superintendent, do you have any comments this evening? Oh my goodness. Um, actually, I have a number of things to uh, update the board on because we been, been very, very busy. Um, I guess, first of all, from the previous meeting um, where we had talked about fields with all the talk of great weather, people are really excited about getting outside. So um, uh, Brandon and Joyce and their staff have been working furiously. Um, the Wadwood Middle School uh, bids are um, coming in this week that it's out to bid. We believe that uh, that'll come in at the price that we hope and we'll be able to get started on that uh, fairly uh, quickly once all of those are randomly run through the committee. Uh, Jefferson High School, the work on that field begins this week. So um, we're excited about getting that in, getting it done so that the fields are ready for play. We met multiple times uh, last week and made more revisions over the weekend and today to our return to play guidance, which we expect to release this week for all coaches. We met with principals, secondary principals, ADs, uh, coaches, the leadership team, and um, called through the guidance that WVSSAC just released um, last week. Um, the Friday, uh, end of the Friday before, uh, for us to be able to create a set of guidance for student safety, for coaches, for parents, so everyone knew what to expect in all of the sports. Uh, given the complexity and that each sport is different, it was a very, very complicated uh, venture, but we've created a one-page front and back guidance document, we've created a graphic, and we've created a Q&A for public coaches and parents. Um, I have honestly got to say kudos, just absolute um, masterful work by the staff. Uh, we expect that we'll be releasing that this week for everyone. Um, it follows all of the guidelines. We um, are having uh, the health department take a look at it and make sure that they're good with uh, everything that's on there. So we are just covering all of our bases. We wanna turn everybody loose and uh, have them outside and healthy and uh, re-engaging in relationship because we know how important that is, but we also want them safe. So we are, we are, checking this nine ways to Sunday to make sure that we've covered our bases um, and uh, very slowly and very carefully open things back up so folks can go out. Um, as you've all also seen, we put out a notice uh, right before the pandemic, the board had begun the process uh, for round three of uh, reviewing the uh, CEFP projects in the bond and doing updates, uh, taking all the committee work, putting it back out for public comment again. Um, so uh, given that some conditions have changed and that people uh, may want to consider some more uh, really uh, progressive ideas that they may not have thought as um, clearly about before this pandemic, um, safety ideas we already had in the bond, uh, touchless uh, soap dispensers and uh, automatic flush toilets and uh, touchless hand dryers. And really those were all in there because we were very interested in the cost savings of them, but they are also very, very good uh, sanitary practice. Uh, so we're going to talk to the public and explore ideas like uh, doorway temperature scans 
we have the capacity, the equipment exists for us to scan people to they come into the building and, and preemptively notice people if uh, they may not be well. Uh, send them to the nurse and, and work that out. We have the ability to sit down and have a conversation about the structure of a new uh, Shepherdstown Elementary School and a new Ransom Elementary School. They don't have to look like traditional schools. They really might have a very different structure with a blend of uh, virtual and flexible learning environments and traditional. So there are a lot of things on the table that I think people may not, may have thought were. I think people had this idea we were talking about them and they were seeing that as far, far in the future. And we're like, no, no, we're talking about now. We're talking about by the time we get these schools built. Um, and so Thursday night's forum with the board is going to be a good opportunity for us to sort of talk to the public about here's everything that we have recommended in the bond um, and here are some ideas around that for us to make some changes and to look at other ideas and see what folks can put in. So I'm actually kind of excited to get back to that. It'll be, it'll be, uh, it'll be nice to, uh, to work on that. Um, and um, we'll talk some more. We also spent some time this week talking about Title IX training, not the most exciting thing. Very sorry uh, for our attorney, uh, Laura Sutton. Very glad that that's her bailiwick and not mine. Um, and uh, some of the changes there, but it's been a full week and we're pretty excited for that. You guys have been busy. Thank you. <laughs> we have been busy. All right, um, approval of minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from the regular and special board meetings held on May 26th? That was the budget meeting. So move Osborne. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Lochner. Thank you. All right, any discussion about the minutes? All in favor? Hi. Hi. Thank you. All right. And Ms. Werner, there was nobody signed up for citizens' comments this evening. No, Is that That's correct. All right. Um, unless anybody objects, I would like to just move the consent agenda down to after we talk about the summer school programs, just because of the fact that the consent agenda has a lot of positions that are in the summer school programs. So unless there's an objection to that, I'd like to just hold off on that and move it down later. Is that, is that okay with everybody? Perfect. All right. Um, and then we have, we'll move down to unfinished business, the approval to award the bid for the 2020-2021 athletic trainers to pivot physical therapy. Mr. Dilley, do you have anything on that? Yes, I do. Uh, we received one bid. We received a bid from Pivot, um, Pivot Athletic Training, who is our current provider. Their current bid for was the same as their previous uh, assignment, or excuse me, was the same as this past year at eighty-four thousand dollars for their um, services. So they're just continuing the same fee rate as they did for us in the previous years and. To my knowledge, everybody's very happy with their services to us at this point. Okay. Is Mr. there? Um, I have a quick question. Do I have questions now or? No, let's go ahead and make a motion and then we can have discussion. Okay. okay, I'll make the motion. Perfect. Thank you, Ms. Lochner. Is there a second? Osborne, second. Thank you, Mr. Osborne. All right. Wendy, did you have discussion? Yeah, just a quick question. You know, the um, the use of the AEDs that's required uh, to be at all practice sessions. So I just want to make sure that they're aware of that and that would that they have the capability to do that. That they either have the equipment or we're providing the the equipment. Just want to make sure that we're compliant with that request. You know, that new policy. Yes, I did send them all of the WBSSAC requirements. There are a number of provisions within their um, proposal. Uh, we'll, Laura and I are kind of working through those details with them right now, uh, pending the approval this evening to get all those details worked out. But AEDs is included in that. Okay. 
Okay. Any other discussion or questions? All right. All in favor of awarding the bid for the 2020-2021 athletic trainers to pivot physical therapy. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. All right, new business, 9A, action on approval for an RFP to obtain playground mulch. Yes, we'd like to request to the board that we um, go out to bid for an RFP to replenish the playground mulch on all of our playgrounds. Is there a motion to approve sending out an RFP to obtain playground mulch? So Osborne. Osborne second. Who made motion? Laurie. Um, thank you. All right. Any discussion or questions? Joyce, I'd like to thank you uh, for doing this because this is a huge uh, liability issue and it's not something on the building principles now and we appreciate that. You're very welcome. <laughs> and what would the timing of that be, Ms. White? We're going to have to advertise for two weeks with the RFP. So once we put the RFP out there, which should be later this week, um, I anticipate that we would lay that mulch in July, but prior to the start of school. Okay. Joyce, can you also tell me, are they looking at the tire mulch or the, like, are there different kinds at different schools and we're going to try to get them all the same? I know we've worked with Brim before on that. So Mark is right. That's good to address all those, but is there um, something specific you guys are thinking about? You know, I'm not sure what Brandon is thinking about. I can pose that question. Certainly, if it's the will of the board, we can price it with the um, rubber mulch and we can price it otherwise. And that way, you could see the price difference and would be able then to have two different bids to compare and contrast. Uh, the, the rubber mulch is going to last, of course, a lot longer in there than uh, the regular mulch. In the past, it was a playground mulch that they advertised as a playground mulch. And uh, there was reasons why we didn't go with the rubber tire mulch at that time. And I believe there are probably regulations about that. I'm going to um, ask Brain, and I can research that, Lori, and definitely get back to you about that. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, just remember there was something with Brim that if we had had a certain amount and it was a certain kind that it, it was it was better for our liabilities it dropped our our risk or i remember several years ago that coming up um at one of the schools like mark was saying there was a difference in them so just just as you so as an fyi for you guys thank you very much Lori. and is there a way to put in there to maintain a certain amount of mulch throughout the year because i mean you know, once we put it down, it's nice and fluffy and great. And then when spring comes back and the kids are back out there, I know it's worn down. And I believe Parks and Rec, their latest thing was they, you know, had somebody come out and make sure it's maintained at a certain level. I think we can certainly do that. And I believe in the regulations, it has to be maintained at a certain level anyway. So right. that's a very good point. We want to make sure that we maintain that depth. Perfect. Thank you. All right, all in favor of um, approving the RFP to obtain playground mulch? Aye. 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 I would just quickly say too for Joyce, um, it may be something too cost effective wise we might want to add to uh, the RFP when it gets rebid for the um, landscaping crew because I know the old landscaping crew used to do that separately but they we're concerned about that too, and I'm sure these guys are as well, but there probably is some pricing. I mean, I'm sure you can kind of go back and see what it's cost us, but it may be something that's more cost-effective for us to add to the RFP long-term. Okay, thank you. Okay, were there any opposed to the motion? All right, thank you. All right, next is action on approval of the McCormick grant recommendations for school year 2021. Ms. Swartz, Hi. thank you for joining us. Um, on the agenda is what I have. If you look at the second page um, where it gives you the amounts and everything, the, the amount of the check this year was 
$93.66. So minus 1,800 administration fees, it was $154,293.66. Um, 10 percent goes to the media center off the top, so there's 15,437 cents. So we had $138,864.29 to grant, but we only had um, grants written for $76,951.85. Uh, and we are recommending all of them because they all met the guidelines. Um, so that leaves us with $61,912.44 that we will open back up um, in probably end of September, early October. Um, and that we don't really have a an ending balance just yet because of the COVID-19. Um, the musical didn't get to be done this year, um, they had already ordered costumes and musical rights and play rights and all those things. So that there's still some refunds coming back in from that. Some things didn't get refunded. Um, and I, I think there's a purchase order that's still outstanding for the media center. So we should have an update on that by the next time. But if you look at the chart on page one, um, that's all of the grants that we got. Um, Lynn Brown with the PE equipment. Um, and I told her to round it up. I think it was 11,300 something. And I told her to round it up because I figured some prices might change. Um, Crawford for the um, choreography and costuming. Um, evidently all their fundraisers got cut because they couldn't do their performances. So they're in need of some things. Um, also, dance showcase and concert estimated costs for $3,700. And then the fine arts, they're asking, they got the grant last year for the musical, didn't get to put it on. As I said, there's some things that didn't get reimbursed that they had already purchased. So they're asking for an additional $5,000 um, because they'll have to do alterations on costumes um, or and probably get pay for whatever they didn't get reimbursed for when they order it again. Um, all three of them also, they're the fine arts department, um, put in for $6,000 for a stage curtain, a cyclorama, which is the backstage curtain. I don't think it's the front one. Um, and then a portable Marley floor for $5,812.85. And then Jurashek and Slatkoff put in the technology uh, for a laptop projectors for um, Science National Honor Society STEAM Talks. Um, and Ms. Rowan had approved them, but she was just sending me an email a few moments ago um, saying she didn't realize that the um, there was a laptop on there. And since, can she, are, are you there? Can you tell them what you wanted to say? Yeah, I'm just wanted to look over it with you because I may have a lower price laptop that we already have vetted to put in there for $5.99. Just to save a little bit of money for you. Okay. Um, so we'll have to talk later, but I just realized that price point and uh, Dell laptop. So thank you for working with me. Sure. Um, and then Kelvington, um, $1,220 for coral folders, $2,235 for risers because her show choir has grown and they're in disrepair, the ones she has. Um, Kelvington also $7,000 for vocal music choreography and music arrangement fees and costume alterations. Um, Lynch, $25,530 for instruments and $3,250 for the drill design for the marching um, band field maneuvers, which this year it will be frozen. That's all I have. If you have any questions. Suzanne, I have a question. Is there a point in time when, um, like if we have a goal of trying to do the one-to-one -one device plan and looking at both the high schools first to try to implement that kind of a thing, that the school itself could not apply to add some of that money to actually free up funds to be able to outfit Washington High because Jefferson was able to gain some funds here 
and be able to get one-to-one -one devices because it does affect the whole school that way. Is that a budgetary item that would be allowed through McCormick grant that you know of? For Jefferson, yes. Right, right, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, wasn't thinking. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a good job you do. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that's probably one of the reasons that we had everybody voted to um, leave it open in the fall because we didn't know. Um, if we would need some extra technology for things like that. And also, um, Mrs. Lewick, who is the media specialist, she had even said, because she gets that $15,000, and she said, you know, we really don't need any more books, so she was even willing to put in um, some of her money if we wanted to go to something like that, too. I think that would be fantastic. Okay, thanks. Well, thank you very much for, I know this is one little chart, but a lot of work goes into the chart. So we appreciate all the time and effort that you guys go through vetting all of this stuff. So thank you. Thanks, it's our pleasure. All right, so is there a motion to approve the McCormick grant recommendations for school year 2021? So moved. Lockner. Is there a second? Osborne second. Any other question or discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, have a good evening. You too. Next is action on approval of summer school programs. Yes, this evening board, we're asking that you consider the approval of the following summer programs. Uh, some of these um, are pending, obviously, the conditions and changes that may occur over the summertime. But ultimately, what we've done is we've gone ahead and put the applications in, done some of the preliminary planning in the event that we would be able to follow through with some of these events. But we are moving forward currently with the high school summer school virtual program for credit recovery. Uh, we're also doing that for our middle school summer school programs as well as the um, work that we were able to do with special education some of those services that we're able to do that we're hoping that as safety provisions allow us with social distancing requirements obviously we want to try to do some things more face to face and hands on if possible but we are going to continue to move forward with those uh, things that we can do virtually right now with our special education extended school year program the Energy Express program has gone also virtual this year, and so they're trying to do some work with that. Obviously, they're not having the same turnout as we'd wish at this point, but uh, they are mailing books to the students so that the students are getting reading material for this program and doing that. Uh, the one that we are kind of pending and holding on is the summer experience for primary grades, and that would be a Driscoll, Paige Jackson, and C.W. Shipley, and if we would be in the light hopefully event that we would be able to provide those programs they would be very late in the summer as early as possible just for our elementary folks we would not be able to due to the logistics and timing and uh, requirement of planning would not be able to do our traditional ELL program this summer unfortunately so this evening we're asking for permission to move forward with those plans even though some of them may not come to fruition due to uh, the conditions that may exist later in the summer. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the summer school programs? Osborne, so move. Second. Second, Lochner. Thank you. Mr. Dilley, do we have any idea about how many students would participate in the high school and middle school credit recovery program? Typically, I believe we get around about 100 students, if I'm not mistaken, in those programs. I haven't seen what the current enrollment is this year, if it should be down um, further than it traditionally has been. But we do, know, we do know that we do have students that have signed up to participate this summer. I just don't know what that actual number is because we're still working through some folks right now trying to get some kids to participate because of their um, 
status in school. Okay. And have we collected the Chromebooks that we passed out to get kids through the end of the year? And can we distribute those Chromebooks to those students that need it for the summer school program? Those Chromebooks, to my knowledge, have not been collected back at this point, but uh, we do still have some that weren't uh, handed out from the initial purchase uh, just due to the lack of uh, requests from them. But we anticipate uh, those requests will go up if the fall should look anything similar to this year. But we, we do have an adequate number to cover summer school programs at this point. Okay, thank you. Any other question or discussion? Is it because of doing it virtually, will we have less staff um, necessary for summer school? And if so, um, also, how are we going to track some of the uh, students that we need to get, or how are we even tracking them now? Like, have, have we are we sure that we've made contact with all students who would need that, especially in the special education realm? Um, are we tracking how many times we've we've met? you know, with them in what capacity, things like that. How, how is all that going to look? Yeah, the, the special education team has been reaching out to a lot of families and documenting their efforts to uh, secure if they're wanting to participate or not. But many of them are choosing not to participate virtually because obviously um, it's the, not the same type of program that would exist in a face-to-face -face environment. So uh, I think many of them are, like many of our summer programs, are choosing uh, to let their kids to get outside and away from the computer a little bit. So I think that's one of the struggles they're facing right now. But uh, right now I can attest to that they have been making a number of phone calls and reaching out uh, to try to ensure uh, folks are, um, know they have some options there. And if we okay the summer school programs and then they do not end up happening, um, is that something that then they're contractually, we are contractually um, required to pay them for services even though we didn't provide, you know, we don't, we're not going to have that? Or is that something that if we can't go forward with those summer programs at the elementary levels, um, that then we don't have to expend those funds? Yes, we would We would basically set it up to where if they were not coming into demand or if they were unneeded, we would not be paying them a contractual fee. So. Um, that would be obviously limited. We could do that in the posting and we could do that other ways as well. But that is the intent to do that is to ensure that we're not paying for something and we're not getting any services. Any other questions? All right, hearing none. All in favor of approving the summer school programs? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. Um, discussion and consideration of the personnel policies section to be placed on public review. Good evening. Um, you probably noticed on the agenda that there were many policies that um, were put up there for request um, to put on public review. Um, and the reason for this is that for at least the past five years, there's been an attempt and a desire to condense, update, and evaluate all JCS um, policies. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, NEOLA or not, but NEOLA is a company that provides um, school policies for the majority of school districts in the state of West Virginia. Um, they're all based on state and federal statutes and then also allows for local amendments and administrative guidelines. Um, attached to tonight's agenda is a 395 page PDF. However, when these policies will be adopted, the benefit of it is that they'll move to board docs where they'll be broken down um, into their individual policies um, where they're much more readable, um, searchable format um, that gives easier access to um, our policies. Um, board docs will house them um, and what we are legally bound to while giving us the flexibility to address items operationally. 
The policies in tonight's agenda reflect chapter six of our current policy manual that connect to NEOLA's package of personnel specific policies. Tonight, we request that the board approve um, to pay um, to allow us to place the policies out for public comment. All right, thank you. Is there a motion to um, place the personnel policies out on public review? I move, Lori. Is there a second? Second, Lochner. Thank you, Ms. Lochner. Any discussion or question? I have a quick question. So um, is Miola something of a service we're paying for? Or, and how, how are they getting broken down you know, into these smaller documents? Like what, what is that process? And is that something we pay for additionally or we're you doing no. all that, Amy? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the system and the process is that um, yeah, we do we do pay for a service. Um, and we started off with the um, personnel policies because um, if we're doing like a group of this with all of our policies that especially impacts personnel, then it's good to have that all done. So that way we're starting off on the school year um, with what those policies will be instead of getting us started and then switching them mid-year. So it, it makes it a little bit more cleaner and tighter if we can um, go ahead and have the personnel policies in effect. Um, as the school year, new school year begins. Um, then what you'll see is uh, each, um, we broke it up in kind of like J JLT uh, sections. So um, Joyce will be working on um, her portions with her group. Um, Sean, um, Dr. Gibson will be doing administrative and then um, you know we'll have legal sections as well. So, um, and that's where uh, Susan Grady came in. Um, from EPIC to help us. And she has taken our current policy manual and um, she has uh, reviewed that with the NEOLA policies to um, make sure that there's um, cross-referencing going on, um, what pieces are missing, what pieces um, you know, all got swept into it. Um, and then you have to kind of go through and make selections. So, um, there'll be one policy where um, you have the flexibility to choose what is applicable to your school district. So um, you kind of mark those boxes and then they go through and they review it all and um, put in there uh, your section that you selected and they omit um, the, the selection that you um, didn't want in there. Um, and there's also some things that we can integrate into it that may not be included in their policy, but it's like a district level preference or policy that we want to have unique to Jefferson County Schools, um, then that can be added in there as well. But the, the premises of, of it is that they're, they're pretty much canned policies that they're based on code. So that they should be uniform for most school districts because that's where a lot of our policies come from. They come from um, you know, code or, or whatever federal statutes um, are out there with, you know, dealing with uh, general employment um, laws and practices. Okay. And then we, oh, then each member, JLT member serves as kind of like the um, interface with uh, Neola and with Susan Grady with moving them from their templates to um, our drafts and reviewing the drafts and then getting them to clean and tight policies for us to be uh, comfortable with being adopted. Okay. Ms. Lochner, just so you know, one thing that we've been working toward is getting these, um, you know, policies on board docs so that they're searchable because right now in the format that they are, you can't search them. And so you read 345 pages to find what you're looking for as opposed to putting in, you know, military leave and it pops you right there. Yeah. And one of the benefits too is that presently if there was a update or a policy that was added or changed, then we would take that PDF document off of the website. We'd convert it to a Word document. We'd update that section, which then would alter the formatting of everything else. <laughs> and then we'd mm -hmm. have to reformat it, save it as a PDF, and then put it back up there. <laughs> so it can, it, it's, it's a pretty um, sure. cumbersome process. So I think for us um, in administrating these policies across the county, 
Um, it's going to be um, a huge benefit for efficiency and cleanliness, but also for our community members to be able to find a policy and get their hands on a policy um, right. is going to be a really good resource to us. Okay. So what, whose budget or where does that come out? Where is that? What, what are we paying for that? We had, we had Neola, this, again, this has been a five-year project. Um, okay. Several years ago, the board had allocated funding for okay. policy, and we've had that in the, and we've had that in the budget ongoing while we searched okay. for a, a, a platform that was digital, searchable, and that gives us alerts when the law changes so that our staff, you know, that's part of the benefit of it as our legislature is very active and uh, makes changes. The NEOLA sends us the boilerplate language. And I want to be clear, we still have every capability of uh, customizing it to Jefferson. And several of those things we did. We had to take NEOLA boilerplate. We had to tell them, but in Jefferson, this is how uh, our, our board wants it enacted. Uh, based on our previous policy, and, and they're going to have to make individual changes off of that. So, uh, you know, it's the best of both of those, and it's compatible with board docs. Some of this was just our capacity to get board docs on board and be able to do this kind of electronic sharing and openness and people to be able to see um, everything in board docs and uh, ease of searching. We were using a lot of PDFs and because we had to pull it down, as you said, that whole process, we ended up with a lot of mistakes and a lot of redundancies. We would have old policies, we would write the new one, it would be cut in over it, there would be, it was just a very messy process and it ended up in messy uh, policy that if you'd been here for a long time, you knew where to look, but if you hadn't, it, it was hard. Part. Yeah. We're, we are really trying to make it easier for people to participate and to see what's in there and to find what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll see too that um, they kind of go in more of like a series uh, reference to. So um, uh, based on whatever um, is that function like administration or operations or finance and personnel, you'll see that there may be some of the same policy in each one because it could be connected to all of those groups. So instead of just having it housed in one place, it kind of makes it counterintuitive that, um, yeah, I have this topic, but um, I think it's going to be an operation, so I'm going to look there, and you don't find it because it's in this mm -hmm. other section. But if if it's if it's related, then they try to keep them in each section. So that way you're not hunting all over the place of where this policy could possibly be. Um, so that's what's nice about it too. And um, um, there was other, one other thing I was gonna say. Um, oh, so like the series. So um, administration would be 1,000, um, you know, personnel is 3,000 and 4,000. And the reason why there's two series um, connected to personnel is that you have um, some policies that kind of are overarching um, that covers both uh, professional and service, but um, 3,000 is more of the professional policies, whereas mm -hmm. um, 4,000 is more of the service um, policy. So you'll see as you go through this that you're like, oh my gosh, there's a redundant. There's you know two policies saying the same mm -hmm. thing. That's because one is going to be technically um, in the section for service to look for, and then one is going to be in for professionals to look into. Right. Most of the times they'll probably be exactly the same. Sometimes there might be a little bit of a change um, in them and some others, there could be significant changes. Um, and then the series go down based on your, um, your, your group, your ID changes. Okay. And the final thing for future reference is that we've also uh, committed to, we'll be able to tie SOPs uh, right now, uh, when someone goes to do something that's in policy, let's say you look up leave of absence policy, well, there's a leave of absence form. So what should happen is you go to leave of absence policy and you click on it and then underneath it, there's a link for a form and you click on the link and it gives you the form and you can do what you came to do. And we have to have an electronic format in order for that kind of system to work. 
Um, sure. you, you can't do that in PDF. So that was a huge driver for us is as we get these policies done electronically now, you could go on, you click on, or you type in leave of absence, it pops up the leave of absence policy and you scroll through it and it says, hey, here's the leave of absence form. Click and you pull that up. That's what we're trying to do. It's an ease of use thing yeah. as well. Right. That's the next step after policies, but yeah. <laughs> And that's and and that's why um, it was so um, important to have um, Susan be on the team to help us with this because she has experience with Neola. She, you know, is a you know has been a school administrator. She knows the process and knows the policies um, in and out. And so, um, you know, we could have our options were either to do it in house or to choose a company like Neola. And I'll tell you just from my experience. Um, doing a policy manual takes a long time sure. and it takes a lot of work and it's not just one person like it is a lot of people who are invested into doing it and um, to have um, a program and to have an individual that can um, be on the back end doing all that heavy lifting um, is has put us in a position to give you personnel policies right now um, this wouldn't have been, a, you know, this wouldn't have been an option to you if we, if we had, um, uh, you know, traveled down other paths. Um, the other thing that, um, you know, Dr. Gibson mentioned that it uh, references forms. The other thing that's a, a benefit of it is that it actually links to the code section. So mm -hmm. if you want to see the code section to support the policy, then it's right there. So you don't have to go in, in the codes and hunt for where this is correlated and, and um, is this really a code or is this you know, made up <laughs> and gives that that verification. It sounds sounds very streamlined. It, it is, yeah, it is. Yeah. Thank you very much. So there's a motion and a second for uh, consideration of the personnel policies policies to be placed on public review. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. All right, and then um, skipping back up to the consent agenda items so that we don't miss that. Is there a motion for the consent agenda? Osbert, so move. Is there a second? Second, Lochner. Any discussion or changes, Dr. Gibson? Yes, ma'am, you will note that there are two changes, uh, number 21. Um, which we clarified because, um, uh, again, trying to give the clearest possible information that person is being appointed to that position, but they are being appointed off of the transfer list. They were already an employee, so they're, they're a transfer. And uh, number 26, uh, also a transfer from uh, Northrop. So we're, we're trying to be um, very consistent and transparent about who is being pointed to a position because they're being pulled off of the transfer list. So thank you very much to Amy and her team because they've done a lot of work to make it much easier between finance and HR and public for people to track where those positions are moving. Okay, thank you very much. Can I ask one question? The um, Based on that policy or with the consent agenda for the credit recovery for the summer, um, just one more question about that. How are we, each person that we're approving on this consent agenda going to get a certain number of students for that? And then how is their um, accountability for, again, for those students or if we don't have enough, like how, how's that going to work? Um, great question. We actually worked with Alex on that very closely. And um, I, we kind of started, um, we kind of started the en enrollment process before we committed to a number of staff. So that way when we requested the staff, um, it was based on more real, real time numbers and, and real time information. Um, so we feel at this point, the number of positions that we um, posted for um, closely matched um, the enrollment needs. And then we put a caveat on there that we would um, you know, we may be in a position to either increase it or de decrease it based on the final numbers. And, and just one other note there that I can add, you'll see also on there some tutors uh, that are listed there. And those are basically positions that are just being set up for office, specific office hours where students can 
reach out for individual or small group help, and they would only be funded if they were actually supporting students during those windows of time. So uh, it's a real positive, we think, as far as supporting students, to, but at the same time, it can be a very cost-effective way to support them. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion on the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you very much. And Dr. Gibson, do we have an executive session for uh, uh, leave of absence? Yes, ma'am, we do. And um, to minimize all of the back and forth and logging in and out of here, um, what we're going to do is I've enabled a waiting room that uh, other than the board, uh, myself, uh, your attorney, and Amy Lauren, who's presenting the leave of absence information, I'm going to place everyone else in the waiting room as if we've asked you to go out to the hallway. <laughs> and then after I place you in the waiting room and the board deliberates, then I'll let anyone who's still in the waiting room back in for the board to take a vote in public session. Okay, so is there a motion to go into executive session for uh, uh, unpaid personal leave of absence? Ogden, so moved. Is there a second? Osborne, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you. Okay, I am going to begin placing you in the waiting room one at a time if you are not uh, on the board, and then when you come out, when we're done, then come out. Waiting room. The waiting room. The waiting room. Kind of feels like you're voting people off the island here. I, I know yeah. it feels terrible. <laughs> okay, so Miss Loring, myself, okay. Mr. Osborne, Miss Lochner. Um. Okay, so I have myself, Amy Lauren, Kathy Skin, Wendy Lochner, Lori Ogden, Laura Sutton, and Mark Osborne. I will also say that I've been texting back and forth furiously with Gary, and uh, he is having what? what was that? He can't hear you. The, uh, we're having a very difficult time uh, trying to get Gary logged in. Uh, he tried several times and uh, was unable to log in. So I, uh, I just want you to know that he was trying and he can't get in. So I'm going to work with him on Thursday to uh, see what might be the problem. Thank you. Ms. Moore. Okay, are we ready? Um, so we have a request on um, this evening's agenda for a personal leave of absence for Laura Hughes. Um, I don't know if you saw in the documentation or not, but Laura's mother was diagnosed with cancer in January. And um, even though she's used FMLA for it for um, this uh, um, past semester, um, she would still like the opportunity to extend that leave. So that way she can um, continue to provide care for her, but she's also expecting um, a third child. That was a surprise. And um, obviously with the COVID, it, you know, COVID concerns and um, would be in the later stages of the pregnancy. And then also she would have, you know, Does that look like everybody? Yes, ma'am. There's no one in the waiting room. Okay. Is there a motion to go back into open session? Move, Osborne. Is there a second? Second, Lochner. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. All right. Thank you. So, is there a motion to approve the unpaid personal leave of absence? So move, Osborne. Is there a second? Second, Ogden. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Um, Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you very much. And we look forward to seeing you guys Thursday. And good luck with the election to everybody tomorrow. Thank you. Yes. Uh
I, I have a question. Kindergarten registration. How are we doing kindergarten registration right now? Uh, it's entirely online and we have flyers if you go into the post office or if you go into, we have them posted up all around town. There's a, um, a little scan box on there. You can hold your phone up, scan it and fill it in and email it to us. You can uh, pick up a paper one, fill it out, drop it in our black box up at the school board office. You can call and make an appointment. Any of those will take for kindergarten registration. Thank you. Hey, Dr. Gibson, too, just to let you know, um, the new development that's going in off of Flowing Springs in um, Old Country Club Road, yeah. um, a lot of houses popping up. And I, when I drove by the other day, there was a, um, a welcome new baby boy sign. So. <laughs> There's babies being born in our new developments. Honestly, my guess is that if I can hold on for five, six more years, there's going to be a big swing back up. Yes, that is true. Yeah. You're going to have all the COVID babies coming. Oh, yeah. yeah. Woo, there's going to be a big spike. Um, real quick, you mentioned they were at the post office and around town. Are they on the school doors as well? So if a parent goes to the actual school to register? Of elementary schools, yes. Okay. Yes, I can't vouch say for secondary, but elementary, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I can say, Sean, um, I don't know if Mary Lynn did it all on her own, but if she did our team, they did a fantastic job of getting those flyers up because even though I haven't been um, out and about many places, I can tell you the places that I've been, I'm almost seeing um, a registration form with the QR code at every single place that I haven't seen before. So mm -hmm. she um, did a fantastic job with getting those um, announcements out. They're at Martin's, they're at the post office, they're at the doctor's office. I, I do, I've seen them everywhere. Yeah. yeah, I was at To Go Glory Days and it was <laughs> ran on the window <laughs> as you're parked at curbside parking. <laughs> <laughs> Post them in Berkeley County. <laughs> <laughs> with the Yes. <laughs> Sorry. You bring, bring them over here. Well, thank you, everyone. Enjoy thank you. the rest of the evening with the nice weather, and we'll see you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye. Good night. Good night.